real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's off? We here, man. Episode 25. We're 25 years old now. <laughs> Not true. 25 <laughs> episodes, man. Yo, we here. Big show. Um, Mr. DL. Mr. DL. You got my son True up what's in the good? crib. What's good, man? It's your boy Tremaine, yeah, man. you know what it is. Um, so what's going on with you, Big Shug? Uh, man, I'm chilling, man. You know, life is good, man. We still breathing and believing. You know what I mean? So we, we, we out here, man. You know. Let's start. What do we want to start with? I, I want to start with this. Boys in the Hood. Did you watch that in the theaters when it came out? In the original. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. the theaters? You went to see it in the theaters? No, I think I actually was saw that at the cricket. That's back when people were still getting... Um, D- CDs for, I mean, excuse me, DVDs from uh, t- written movies from the spot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What was that one? Uh, VHS, that. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. That, that, what was yeah. the name? What was the. Um, Blockbuster. Blockbuster was bomb. <laughs> they was booming back then. You know there's still one left, right? Oh, word? In Bend, Oregon. There's yeah, a one. Yeah, you used to go to that yeah. motherfucker and get that's the, I saw it on that because actually, man, we kept that movie. You know, they try to put on, add more dollars and shit on the shit. You know what I mean, right? And, and we kept that goddamn movie. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yo, you, shout out to boys. What'd you think about it when it first came out? I mean, it was so, um, it was so real. Like it was so, you know, uh, 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 authentic, man. You know, it opened your eyes to some things as well if you didn't know about it. So, it was dope, man. It had that feel because everybody you know some people knew somebody where the kid was a star. The other kid was in the streets. Yeah. You know, maybe the mom's a single parent. Like, so many things you can relate to and see. You know, so I, I thought it was dope when it came out. You know? I think it holds up, man. I watched it recently. And you ever seen it, True? Boys in the Hood? Yeah, of course. You seen it? Yeah. How, what did you think about it? Because that was came out before you were even born. Yeah. So. yeah. I mean, Boys in the Hood was very, um, very legendary movie. Um, cra- it's a very sad ending. Uh, it's, it's sad a lot of, a lot oh, of Ricky's. movies. A lot of movies uh, for black people in Hollywood that end, be ending like that for real, but mm. um, it was yeah, it was a good movie though. What do you think about? The, was it did it entertain you? Yeah, like, I mean, did it no, keep you? Because it's it's old, so I'm just curious. About no, no, no I, I watch everything, man. He, you, you can ask him. Man. I mean, I, I watch all those like legendary movies. Um, you know, what I mean, they keep me on edge of my seat for sure. Okay. All rush hours, all that shit. He said rush hours like it's old. It's so sad. I mean, it kind of is. It kind of yeah, is. Yeah, kinda, yeah. Man, I mean, it's like 20 years old at least. Yeah, that's that motherfucker rush hour, man. Shit. That's when my brother Chris, Chris um, Tucker was on some raw shit. You know, he was already for it. DL stands for The Legend. Go ahead. Uh, let's see so, who we got next. Did you see that shit with Styles P today? No, I actually didn't. Yeah, I it because it, it came right through, like yeah. when I was, was uh, actually sliding over him, man. You know? um, so uh, this is was trending all morning. Um, Styles P, if you don't know, was in an altercation today with the police. Mm. Oh yeah, he's, he's supposedly uh-huh. helped the unarmed woman. Yeah, who is, we'll, we'll show it right here, we'll show it on the screen when we... Oh yeah. So this lady is, uh, you know, begging for her life here. Yeah, it looked like that, he just grabbed the butt piece. He is a bitch, I know he is. No, no, keep recording. I'm recording. I'm recording. No, keep recording. I hope your camera's on because you did Yo, it the sister, last time. Yo, sister, loosen up. Loosen up. Loosen up. Please, please, please. That's a girl too, by the way. That's a girl, by the way. And I got you on camera. I hope you got me on camera. I hope you got me on camera. I hope you got this on camera. I hope you got this on camera. Yeah, you need a backup. You, you need a backup, Mister. You need a backup. You need a backup. You need a backup. You need a backup. That's a female. That's a female. I hope your camera's on. That's a female. That's a fucking female. Be doing that That's a fucking shit. female. You a bitch, nigga. Like, I'm not that uniform. You know what you are. <laughs> you know what you are. You know exactly what you are. Y'all know who the fuck y'all are. Y'all know. Yeah, he's going. He's going crazy. Um, he's going crazy. This guy obviously wants wants to fight. Yeah, he's going. He's going crazy. This guy obviously wants wants to fucking do something to him. He probably knows who he is. Well, he could, but at the same time. This guy wants to hit so, him so there's bad. So, there's so much dumb shit they can't do it like these days. So it's like, you know, everything's getting look. We see everything getting filmed. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. he's so mad that he can't fuck Styles P up right now. He probably couldn't fuck him up anyway. A lot of them dudes they can't fuck you yeah, up. Yeah, no, that's true. Too. You know what I mean? You just said some crazy shit. Yeah, but he goes bloop bloop, and, and then, then there's then, 30 then, people there. That <laughs> I remember uh, your ass. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I thought that was kind of crazy. That nah, it was kind of crazy, but you know, hey man, just you can't random be with that random guy walking down the street. They're probably they're probably suspended. You know, did you see that little store? He probably was going in the bodega. 
You know what I'm saying? If you go get some. A Bogota? Yeah. <laughs> Head into the Bogota. Yeah, Bogota, yeah. That's, what <laughs> that's how we know you own hamsters when you was a kid. But go ahead. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure like you subscribe. Uh, go to our clip channel and see what's going on over there. We got full episodes, interviews, clips, that shit. all that shit. But listen. What's going on with Jewel Santana? Jewel Santana has a perfect response when asked to save either Cameron or Jim Jones. During a recent appearance in Wild and Out, Jewel Santana was asked which Dipset brother would he save. And he says, uh, Dipset brother, he was saved if either Cameron or Jim Jones was getting stomped out in prison riot and oh, offered a hilarious, uh, and he offered a hilarious response. That's dumb as shit anyway, because like, I mean, <laughs> Stupidest if, question if they're your people and they're getting stomped, uh, something's going on in prison riot, man, you you already scrapping. Ain't no time for questions and shit. You gonna do what you gotta do, man. That's that bullshit. Yeah, I know all my years in uh, prison. I was I was definitely scrapping and stomping. Now you look like you was, you know, that's what happens. When, <laughs> hey, that's what happens when a white kid move in the hood. He got a scratch and stomp. Scratch and stomp. Might be some roaches and shit up in the crib. But I don't know. Would you still used to but, stomp mice when you were a kid? Yeah, man, stomp fire out the motherfuckers. <laughs> But anyway, um, st stop the cheese shit out the motherfucking mice. Son. I ain't playing. Y'all mice know what it is. They know. But uh, that's why God, he says, Santana says, that's why God gave me two hands. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's too much smart shit to ask, so they ask you dumb shit. Well, speaking of dumb shit, yeah. are you, I heard R. Kelly's engaged. Did you, you told me this? Well, <clears throat> you're man. No, sell my fuck. My man. Yo, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. R. Kelly was engaged to one of his alleged sex crime victims. She says, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, listen, now crazy ass shit like this really stems from, they might have really had a relationship, like for all we know. And, and maybe it is like that. But with all the other different things going on, you know, uh, uh, everybody's gonna lean one way anyway. And yeah. he's found guilty, so that's where it's at. So maybe this is legitimate. Uh, it says on July, uh, on Monday, July 11th, a little while ago, TMZ obtained legal documents showing that Battle R&B singer is engaged to Jocelyn Savage. At least, at least that's how she introduced herself in a letter to Judge Ann Donnelly prior to the sentencing. So this was before he was um, getting hit with the 30. I guess I'm confused. If she's a victim, that means she had a case against him? And well, now for, if people paid attention to um, how can a hog tie up? No, but if they have been finished. <laughs> if he, Gail, what are you talking about? Gail, how can a hog I don't know how to hog tie. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something, man. Have y'all seen that Yo. shit? Y'all know that if some of them girls was, was really like liking him and was claiming that their parents and their family, you know, cause uh, uh, were against R. Kelly. Some of them, because at the end of the day, they, there's always money that uh, has a fact that factors in. Yeah. Because if he was broke as shit, somewhere else living like that, none of us would know nothing about it, none of that shit. So, but um, she said, my name is Jocelyn Savage and I'm Robert Kelly's fiance. The letter begins. I'm not a victim that the government has portrayed me to be. My relationship with Robert is amazing. He ain't gonna be in jail for 30 years, man. That's that dumb shit, man, you know? I'll face in jail but, for 30 um, seconds. Huh? I said, hopefully he's in jail for 30 seconds. I mean, he gets a little visit. But do y'all feel like that letter was genuine? I do. I do only because if you watch the documentary, you know, if you see like, like there were a couple of those women that were like, no, there's not a problem there. But then their parents were saying otherwise. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why even me, myself, because I watched that. How can a hog tie her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to hog tie. Gail! Yeah. <laughs> that boy wild, man. Yo, R. Kelly, man, you know what I'm saying? Only God knows, man, the truth. Only he can judge. Man, do your time, man. Let's move past this. So what you got next, Mr. DL? I don't know how to hold time. DJ Premier has a new album now. Is this the thing that him and Nas were hinting at? Um, no. No? No, no. This is uh, a new album of his own. Yes. It's basically an EP. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, in, in, EP stands for when you're young, you know? EP, EP uh, when you're was young. it extended play? No, no, you get early pussy. <laughs> I'm saying, 
<laughs> it's too right. Yeah, you know you were hundred percent right, but I just had to slide that, man. You you fourteen starting to break it up, break up front. You remember this is so random. Do you remember Maxi singles? Yes, yes. Yeah, the, the, the longer ones. I love those. You yeah, know what that was? Tremendous. So back in the day, they used to put out singles. It'd be like um, you know, Big Sugar Crush would be a single. A side one would be the song, and side B would be like the instrumental and, and maybe the radio edit. Mm -hmm. But Maxi single was that plus it had like two songs that probably weren't gonna make the album you know what i mean oh, okay so yeah. it was you know you know that shit no i do yeah that shit was tight so anyway talk what you talk we're talking about uh i forget who we were talking about you talk what you talk we ain't gonna bust a nut we're talking whatever he say son so what so listen now we're on now <laughs> yo, yo listen yo <laughs> yo imagine that just motherfucker say something to you and you just let him know in front of just head up. Let's cut all the bullshit out right now. Just be like, listen, man, whatever you say to me is so what? <laughs> so, like, go ahead. What you gonna say? Yo, the motherfucker already know you fucked him up. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> yo, 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 listen, just stop, 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 stop. Whatever you about to say to me right now, my mentality is like, so what? <laughs> so, go ahead. What you, yo, uh, you gonna be on some shit like, oh, okay, well, uh, there's no reason to talk to him. Uh, but, um, it's all okay. <laughs> Hey, listen. Oh, uh huh. Hold on. I forget where we were. I, no, we at the EP for P. Oh yeah, Primo. Primo. Yeah, oh EP for P. DJ Premier, my man, <laughs> announces Hip Hop Volume One, um, an album with Nas, Lil Wayne, Run the Jewels, and more. With Hip Hop's 50th birthday landing in 2023, <clears throat> Mass Appeal has a series of events and projects. With Hip, um, with, uh, sorry about that. Let me do it again. With the 50th birthday, Hip Hop's 50th birthday landing on 2023, Mass Appeal has a series of events and projects plotted to continue celebrating the momentous occasion. On Monday, July 11th, um, Nas co-founded company announced DJ Premier's latest endeavor, endeavor, Hip Hop Volume 1, the first EP installment of the Hip Hop 50, the soundtrack, including Nas, Lil Wayne, Run the Jewels, Slick Rick, Rhapsody, Joe ba Joey Badass, Remy Ma, and is a schedule and is scheduled to arrive on Friday, July 15th. What's good, D? All right, the next thing I want to talk about, the last thing I have for hip hop here is have you been watching this whole Con Conway Funk Flex thing? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't, but I have seen Jermaine peep some of that, but go ahead. Yeah, what yeah. do you think about it, Jermaine? Why don't you <clears throat> let him know what's going on? I mean, I haven't really um dove into it as deep as I wanted to yet, pause. Um <clears throat> but uh I know basically it's about just Conway was just saying how like you know old niggas is just I'm um, trying to gatekeep shit in New York and you know what I'm saying He's, he feels like Funk Flex is one of them um, culprits of that and uh, he's just letting like them niggas know like you know he, he's just not rocking with them you know what I'm saying yeah, alright so Con Conway said all that and Funk Flex res re responded with this he's, what did he respond with he said lol so what let's begin he said so what <laughs> he said let's begin whatever you you're say managed, so what you're managed by Rock Nason that's Jay-Z. You're signed to Shady Records. That's Eminem. Eminem. You're distributed by Interscope Records, which is a major label. You and your team have had features from Jay-Z, Eminem, Lil Wayne, J. Cole, Jadakiss, Travis Scott, French Montana, and more. Weren't you guys on Don on the Donda album? I'm going to give you the advice Paul Rosenberg should have gave you. You're a 40-plus bars rapper. Sorry, you're a lyricist. And they put crying face, laughing that has had every resource possible. If you are not happy with your career as of today, with all those cosigns, I think you might have peaked. What do you think? You're only gonna get, you're only gonna take this as disrespect because truth might be a bit much for you. Signed, your grandpa, the wheelchair bandit, warm mm. milk general. Be clear. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, hear what, I hear both of them, what they're saying. I, I, I don't really, it's his fucking show. He can play what he wants to play. Funk Flex can play, you know, it's his show, can play whatever he wants, all right, you know? This is how I look at it. It's always been a battle of airplay. I hate to say that. There's but. always been a battle of airplay. I, I, I'm always going to be down uh, with the artist because at the end of the day, whether your music's being played or not, right, you're still part of your shit. It's still going to be selling your records yeah. and your music streaming now and going on tours and making money. If you so were, you're going to do that even when they long not playing the records on uh, on um, the radio. You know what I mean? So if you work for like a Clear Channel 94.5 type radio and they and they told you what you had to play, I yeah. I, I, I can see these people getting mad at that. But 
I mean, people tune into to a Funk Flex, uh, a K Slay, a, 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 a Soul Assassins Radio because they want to hear the songs that yeah. those DJs think are good. And I think Griselda's super good, like super dope. But like he, uh, um, Funk Flex don't want to play play it. I, I don't think that you should fucking even care. It's just not your audience. Your audience has already found you, first of all. God damn, it's a new day. I mean, I was about to say something like, I don't feel, I don't even see like the real trip over it for real. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they have a lot of fans. They yeah. They, it, you know what I'm saying? They, they're going in the right, the right direction. They're doing well for real. And the end of the day is what I exactly just said. I know, man. <laughs> you know, I was to come one time, man. We was, we was on Smoke <laughs> Brews tour, <laughs> and me and Buster had was, and they motherfuckers was so soaking on the mics, the mic heads and Listerine, mm. right? So I just bent down a little closer to make sure this shit they ain't stink. But those mics were stinking after certain groups was rocking, and, they, and <laughs> ain't no need for me to say the names, but like we know that your that your mic smell like ass. We're talking to you, so, Pros. Uh, yeah, I don't know <laughs> what you was. Motherfuckers was talking in the mic, and mics was smelling like ass. But anyway, uh, it was just was fuck. Like someone dipped him in some shit, so right? You Barely. You don't got anything. You don't. Uh, that, that you don't really give a shit about that. I mean, not really, because like I said, at the end of the day, the artists are on tour. You're gonna make that money. You're gonna sell your streams and your music. There's no need to battle and jostle with the. That's like a play. It's one show in a million shows. Plus, it's that's like a, it's like a shit. it's like a player jostling with a fucking referee. You know what I'm saying? They got their position. They're gonna keep their position. Guess what? You still gonna be a player. You see what I'm saying? So it, it, it's, it's the same shit. So, exactly. All right. You know. We'll see you later, hip hop. Listen, yeah. It was a good week for hip hop. Yeah, keep it moving. Yeah, so. bang, bang, bang. You know what I mean? All right. We always have to talk about the Red Sox and the and the Celtics and the Patriots, but this oh. time we got one thing. I say the Yankees are doing awesome. Well, listen, that's because awesome. you like the awesome. Yankees. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but oh shit, yeah, you. Yeah, but well, you know, you know the yeah, segue I'm going. You, you know the segue is coming, big. Yo, but wait a we had a conversation today. You said the little sports shit. But I, I gotta say, I, 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 so you, you, you we, lying on that red side? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, all, I got yeah, all your, can, I got all your sports yeah, topics. Yeah, we can get, go ahead, speak on what you want to say. So yeah, fucking yeah, um, Yankees are doing great. First team to sixty wins. Aaron Judge, most uh, votes for the All Star. But what we really want to talk about is, it's the anniversary of Babe Ruth hitting seven hundred home runs. Right. First, first player in sports to do that. Um, and I told Big Shug, I thought he was black. And Big Shook that I was said I was crazy. The, the reason why I say that anyway is because, you know, just because who he was and what he did, and, and people try people can't trace your heritage like now. But, well, they can. They can test his daughter or granddaughter I mean, or something. Now, right? but I mean back then, Come here. they weren't doing that <laughs> dot com DNA whatever. This yeah, is yeah. My ancestry. So people say that. And they might even say that because you know. Even with even with his way his nose was, he looked a little different. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I believe that dude had, was no type of black. You know? No, you don't think so? Nah, nah. Oh, really. I figured you'd be all about this. Nah, man. This motherfucker plus. All right, so you're telling me that um, this man right here, I'll, I'll put a picture up for the everyone to see. You're telling me that man's a German man. Shit, he looked like Von Helmut in them. them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't look at that. Look at that motherfucker look German as shit. He don't no look way. like none of my peoples. Now, nah, he, he, I mean, he looked German to me. That you said that shit? Come on. Really? I, I wasn't even thinking German. I was just thinking maybe he just something. But I, you said German. I said yes. Wiener Schnitzel. He looked so, like Wiener Schnitzel in the motherfucker. So man. apparently when Babe Ruth started playing baseball, None of the players, we talked about this today, but none of the players, they none of them wanted to room with him. None of them wanted to ride a bus with him. Mm. They all thought he was black. He yeah. only hung around, he only hung around with black people. He only yeah. hung around in Harlem. He would he would join the, the Negro Leagues to play in, in their in their leagues when the major leagues were over. Right. Um, I mean, that doesn't mean, that's not proof or anything like not that. But but, I, but I'm just saying that. It's and actually, here's, here's, here's the, it's here's actually the thing. Asinine. This man right. was leaps and bounds. Better than everybody he was well, playing. Well, <laughs> it, it boils down to it. Baseball was really about on the offensive end hitting, putting the bat on the ball. Okay, it was power and direction, like that, and that's what he did. He had power, but he was a fat motherfucking dude who eating hot dogs at halftime. We know the smoking folk cigars, was drinking drug. beers. This is why the game's going on, and I can't tell you <laughs> yeah. what, to, what to do because if I say yo DL, fuck you, you, you can't drink. No bears or smoke this, do this during the game. But you're going out smacking home runs. And guess what? 700. He also was a pitcher, too, in the yep. beginning. So, the I mean, Sox. you know, but, uh, like, you know, the bottom line of that, like, no, I don't think Babe Ruth was black. No? But you said he had 700 home runs. 700 home runs. Who broke his record? Um, first, uh, no, who, who broke oh, his record? Barry Bonds. Who? 
who I think is, you know, mm. you, you got to say he, he's mm. the best. Let me tell you something about Barry yeah. Bonds. I know we're talking about Babe Ruth here and everything, mm. but Barry Bonds used to used to have people in fucking kayaks floating around the Pacific Ocean. Right. Because <laughs> the balls was money. <laughs> waiting, but, <laughs> waiting for him to hit a fucking right. home run out there. But do you know, you don't know who, who, who broke the record? Who, who he broke? Was, he was getting death threats and all that. Oh, uh, Hank Aaron? Of course. Oh, I thought you meant the... the, nah, the nah, yeah. I said 700. Then. Oh, broke Babe Ruth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So he broke yeah, Hank you know, Aaron. I know, good cleanup. But um, what I'm saying is... Like, I always felt bad for Hank Aaron when he ran ran those bases that those morons fucking ruined his ruined his moment. Mm. Remember when they, they they came up to him and were congratulating him while he was running bases? Trying to grab shit and all that. Yeah, I think that's shitty. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, damn. I mean, just think how long that fucking record stood. But, um... On another, uh, so damn, I'm just, I'm just doing, I was just doing math right here. What you were saying during the uh, the at bats, the average major league player that like a big money player, John Carlos Stanton, uh, you know Martinez, whatever JD Martinez, they make fucking sixty fifty one thousand dollars in at bat. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking, it's doing crazy. that math in my head. Who was making that Real money, quick, man? I had to do it up here to make sure no. I was right. Did you graduate high school? Yeah, okay. I went to college twice too. No, I did twice, both times. Yep. How much did they get from me? Huh? No. <laughs> I don't even remember, man. Too I went much. to a lot of colleges, too. So what's going on in the NBA? I wrote down NBA. Hey, NBA, before we say the NBA, yeah. shout out to my uh, niece, Jess Easton. You know what I'm saying? She just spent the time at the, uh, the women's um, WNBA All-Star game. Oh, shit. Um, I guess she, she uh, met Cynthia Fowles. She also has a um, uh, 15 and under... Um, I, I believe they're probably nationally ranked team, uh, AAU team, uh, team takeover. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Coach Jessica Easton, that's my niece. You know, shout out to them. They won the tourney this weekend. You know, I guess. Yeah. You know, so you know that that was dope. Yo, just real quick, uh, the NBA votes to pay 24.5 million to former ABA players. The ABA had the Virginia Squires. George Gervin played in the NBA first. I mean, the ABA. Yeah. Uh, Dr. J was in the ABA. Moses yeah. Malone. So it says uh, they, the NBA votes to pay $24.5 million to former ABA players, many who have fell on hard times. About 115 former players are eligible, and players must have played at least three years in the ABA. 3828 per season played, and the amount will be earned per year. So... If they all get an equal share, that's 218 grand a piece. Yeah, some might be doing through some tough shit. Man, this dude is really a wizard. That might be, uh, you know. I never thought you were a wizard. That's life changing at that, at that no age. No question, man. You know, Sometimes, man, you fall on some hard times and the struggles, and when the lights don't shine as bright anymore and the crowd doesn't roar, some people get lost, man. And that's shit be happening. It's, that's, that's life. That's what's happening in hip hop. There's you no know? fucking pension plan. Also, man, on a sad, yeah, yeah, you know, but also on a sad note, um, for all the Dallas Cowboy fans, and I was just a fan of him, uh, former Dallas Cowboy running back Marion Barber the third reportedly died of heat stroke Damn. in his apartment. I mean, he was a great player, man. He was relentless, man. And uh, Baker Mayfield was recently, Cleveland was finally able to get rid of him, and he uh, got traded to uh, Carolina Panthers which he will compete for a starting job with Sam Donald. Um, this was something that was in the pipeline for the longest, so, you know, he gets another opportunity. If the people know a few weeks back, he was considered stupid as hell. <laughs> and uh, hopefully he can get off that stupid as hell truck and, and, and get his thing in order. But we'll see who wins that battle for the season. So, you know, I give it to him, man, for, you know, them giving him your shot. Now it's up to you, man. Ain't no talking. You got to walk it, man. You know what I mean? Walk it like you talk it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, what else you got, man? That, that um, I'm just waiting for that time. To be, hold on, someone's calling. I think it's Marco Polo. We here, episode 25, the Danger Zone podcast. With uh, Big Shug, me, of course. Mr. DL. Mr. DL, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes Chef Tanya Cole, but she's chilling right now. So, you know, big out, shout out to her. Um, we're very pleased and, 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 and we're grateful to have as a special guest... My man, 1,000 grand, Marco Polo. Oh, yeah. What's good, bro? What's, up? What's happening? Oh, man. I'm chilling. I'm here roasting in my studio with no AC in Brooklyn. Wow. Hey, yo, you know what? I call, yo, we, we, we come over here and do this in this studio, this DL spot. 
but I called it like, you know, the basement in the sky type shit. <laughs> but I called him way before I got in and said, yo, is it hot as shit up in there? Because like, listen, even if it is, I'm a, I'll, be, I'll be in the beater, I'll be shirtless. You know what I'm saying? I take I take care of my body now where I could be shirtless again. No, but, yo, so I don't even care, dog. I'll be like, yo, I, but I called him because I, I thought like at some point in the day, I was like, damn, it'd be hot as shit up in there. Yo, you know what I mean? But it's the element, though. We always have a good time, man, you know. But so, you guys got AC? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, this AC, but it's like. It's on top, it's four floors up. Right, so, so. we're on the fourth floor. This is the basement in the sky, you know what I mean? I'm on the fifth, I'm on the fifth, so. Yeah, yeah Yo. it's hot. Man, I did a, uh, as I veer off a little bit, man, I did a um uh, a, a track, hip hop means, um, hip hop means dance with this dude called La Boom. Uh, over in uh, Germany, you know what I'm saying? One of the biggest songs like ever that we did, like you know, oh, yeah, um, that live or let, that let die, I believe it is, or whatever. But um, yo, this dude was like, yo, you gonna do this feature, blah blah. I said, yeah, cool, you know. And Jay Ru was like, yo, shout out to my man Jay Ru. And then dude, you know, it's Germany, and dude, when I when we go over to, to the studio, this dude got like about a hundred million steps, like to get up to with the shit. I was like, yo. I said, you got a girlfriend, man? Because I'm thinking like, as they co are they coming over here going up and down this shit? I'm like, I'm, I'm talking about, yo, I mean, that's one of them shits. If you forgot something, man, you get that shit tomorrow. You know what I mean? It, it was that many. It was a dope ass studio, man. Shout out to Core Mess, my man, and Rob L.A., his man. But man, shit was wild. But anyway, man, listen, can we get people caught up, basically, on the origins, man, and, and give us a little backstory, man, on, your, on yourself, you know? Get them caught up, those who don't know, and, and you know what have you. Okay. Um, Marco Polo, producer, mm -hmm. uh, originally born in Toronto, Canada, moved to New York 20 years ago, right after 9 11. Wow. Uh, the reason I left Toronto was because it was smaller back then. We only had an underground scene, and I felt like if I wanted to get these beats out there, I needed to be in the motherland. And back then, being in New York meant something in terms of like business. Like, of course. We're there, to meet people mm -hmm. um, and that's what i did i moved to new york and i started interning at a studio called the cutting room mm -hmm. shouts to my brother ayatollah mm -hmm. who hooked me, hooked me up with that internship and gave me my name um and yeah man and then i just started interning passing my beat cds out to people watching sessions and then mm -hmm. i met ace at that studio mm -hmm. and just started really getting my name out there making beats giving them to people and getting my buzz in the underground and then you know that led to me dropping my first a producer album called Port Authority, and mm -hmm. here I am. Here I am now, still doing it. Wow, that's that's actually dope. Um, but speaking of Port Authority, have you been in Port Authority, or did you just grab that name? Nah, that was a hundred percent related to my experience. <laughs> so check, so check this out. Before I moved here, I didn't have paperwork. Right. So I came here, and they wouldn't let me in because they're like, "Yo, you're coming to work. You don't have papers." So. They wouldn't let me come and start my internship. So moms took me in the car. We drove across the border in Buffalo, snuck me over. Mm. And um, they let me over and I took a bus from Buffalo. And where did I end up? Of course, time, you know, Times Square Port Authority. Right. And if you haven't been to New York and you that's your first experience, that whole, the whole block surrounding Port Authority, right. everything is going down right there. Yeah. Everything. 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 You could get robbed, you could buy drugs. <clears throat> anything bad can happen. So. It was kind of like an introduction to New York. Like, I'm here and this is some grimy shit, at least for me, coming from a kid from the Burbs in Toronto. Right. And it just it had an impression on me. So I was like, I'm going to name my album Port Authority because it was just a fucking dirty place. <laughs> it's, 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 dirty. It's, it's crazy because my origins, as far as <clears throat> when I started coming to New York after I, I was released, I, had to, I got the bus. What happened was Guru, I think he wanted me to like, you know, come from that side of things and see it like that, you know, see that I really wanted to do this, you know what I mean? Because this is the ascension of gangstar. So uh, I was coming through Port Authority. I'd be waiting sometimes, man, a couple of hours for him to pick me up, you know what I mean? Like, until, you know, it got to the point where it was like, you know, uh, uh, I'm flying in or dudes could be in as soon as the thing touched the bottom, they, they all there. But he would come like 40 deep, you know what I mean? Because everybody started, you know, uh, uh, for, you know, they love the Shook to come through, man. Shout out to the whole crew. Y'all remember them days. And um, Port Authority, like you said, I got my luggage. 
I'm trying to, I, I, I'm, and like that, I don't know what the fuck time is. I got mad luggage though. So I'm trying to like take all the luggage with me, you know, type strong, so I can pee around the corner right here. You know what I mean? So I'm still waiting for Google and them. I'm hungry. I'm taking all this luggage to go get a motherfucking set. This is at Port Authority. And, and then sometimes, I remember one time I went around the side and I'm taking a piss. And then it's like, it's like the ground started moving and shit. Right, I was like, yo, man, wait a minute, man, what the fuck's going on? I smoked a little weed, so I was like, wait a minute, man. But then I'm pissing some more, and then motherfuckers start saying shit, because they're kind of sleeping underneath these cardboards or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm peeing on them shits. So then motherfuckers, them shits come to life. I'm like, oh, my B, I, you know, I ain't trying to pee on cats. <laughs> but it was like, that was, all that shit was straight Port Authority. I was like, yo, wow, man, it was, you know, some other shit, though, you know? But, um, you know, <laughs> I just had to get that one out. So <laughs> from uh, from that point though, so you, you got your beats going and what have you, and um, now you're on the New York scene. So uh, were you just making music or were there other, uh, uh, were there MCs you was like, damn, I gotta meet them, I wanna do beats for them, or, you know, how did, how did, where did it go after that for you? Yeah, the progression was really a few key people. It was um, my dude Pumpkinhead, rest in peace, yes. he did an album. We did an album together called Orange Moon Over Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And then the whole Duck Down camp, shouts to Buckshot, Sean mm -hmm. Price, rest in peace, mm -hmm. Rock, Smith and Wesson, Drew Ha. I started working with them a lot, getting on their projects. Then of course, uh, one of the notable ones and the most important for my career was Master Ace is doing a joint on his album called The Long Hot Summer. And then he did a track for me called Nostalgia, which to this day is still my underground claim to fame. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a video for it and it really kind of took off and helped push my album. And then, yeah, I was just, I was just a guy from Toronto. People were checking for and wanted beats and people were hitting me up for beats and I was just trying to be on everything. I was trying to be on everything. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, man, working with Large Professor. And then I, I remember the first time Primo spun one of my records on his show that was right. monumental and then becoming friends with him. Yeah. And it sounds even crazy to say that now that me and him are friends. Right. Um, but yeah, man, it was just a hustle. It was just trying to get better at my craft and, and, and take the energy from just listening to my favorites and channel that and hustle. Right, Shit. right. I mean, cause, cause I, I've heard a lot of your stuff. Um, actually, you know, um, you've done uh, a lot of collaborations and uh, and then even with my man, also shout out to Stax, you know H Hannibal yes. Stax, and I remember you guys did like, like shit just a few years ago, right? You did a little project with him. Yeah, we did an album together called Seize the Day. I'm very proud of that album. Mm -hmm. um, shit, how many years is it now? Maybe five, six yeah, years. Yeah, just a few. And that's my brother. I, he was one of those dudes where I was just like, man, what happened to him? And then like, right. I, I came here and I'm and I got the opportunity to meet him. I think it was through PF Cut and shouts to PF. Mm -hmm. And then we just locked in the studio and started vibing and decided to do a, a project and there, right. and there it was. Right, yeah, that's, I mean, like, cause you know, obviously that's my man, you know, all, all the, you know, history. But I remember hearing that, <clears throat> excuse me. And we like, damn, he's fucking with him too. So that that was cool for me. Um, so, so are you also a DJ too or, or just a producer? <clears throat> Now I'm glad you asked me this question because it's very important for me to clarify this. So when me and Ace tour, I'm definitely running the music from back where, you know, a DJ would be, but I'm using my MPC to trigger everything live. So I'm doing the shit live, but not with turntables. So people just see me there, they're like DJ Marco Polo, but to be clear, I'm not a DJ. I, I know too many incredible DJs like Revolution and Premier and right. the Beat Junkies to even disrespect them by calling myself a DJ. I'm just like a live performer with Ace. I run the show, which is still dope. But yeah, definitely not like killing it on turntables. I didn't come up on turntables. And, Do you yeah. think they call you DJ Marco Polo from Muscle Memory because there was a DJ Polo? Uh, you know what? I get confused with a couple situations. People think I'm Marco Polo from I&I. &I. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really get DJ Polo though, but Marco Polo from I&I, &I, uh, who I've actually never met to this day. I don't even know what he looks like, but people often think I was a, an original member of Pete's group, I and I, but I wasn't. Oh, wow. That's a completely different Marco Polo. Mm. But no, I never got DJ Polo, that's for sure, which is interesting because I roll with Ace and it's kind of all juicy. Yeah, yeah, so. I'm just cur curious. Yeah. So, when you, so do you ever jump in the swimming pool when they start oh. calling Marco, do you look? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna let you get that dad joke on. Yo, I, I'm like, that shit fucked me up. I'm like, yo, wait a minute, Marco Polo. When I first heard the shit, 
And you know how that shit is. You be up there in the pools, and you hear that shit a million times. Shit. How, how did you come up with the name? So, History shout out to Ayatollah, Ayatollah, legendary producer, most yes. notably of Miss Fat Booty fame. Yes. I was rolling in Queens with him to a lot of sessions. Mm. That's when he was killing it, working with most. And I didn't have a producer name when I moved to New York. My real name is Marco, so he just oh. started calling me. Yeah, he just started calling me Marco Polo, and I was like, "Fuck it, there it is." Oh wow! I like it, it happened naturally. Mm. So it's, it just stuck. See, I never really knew because. They crept on, crept up on me with you with the beats and stuff. Like now, you know, over the years, it crept up on me. That I'm like, who's this dude? And some dudes, you, you, you never really connected with me making music because you really just didn't go in the circle, or didn't see him or whatever. Because everybody I've ever seen, or like you know, from Pete Rock, whoever, that like, trust me, it's always like you know, we're gonna let me send this. You know what I mean? Like beats or whatever. And I've, I've somehow like you know. Uh, I've seen beats from a lot of people, you know what I mean? So Yeah, it's crazy we never crossed paths because it's like five, is it, what is the term? Five degrees of separation? Like, I've worked with Singapore, mm. you work with my man Moss from Toronto. Oh, I mean, geez. obviously, yeah. you're the founder of Gangstar. I'm around Cream mm. all the time. Right. Um, so yeah, it's right. crazy, but I knew eventually the day would come when we would connect, and here we are. Oh, <laughs> that has it never worked ever? That's, nah, that, that's, nah. that's interesting. Hey, you know what's crazy, right? The Moss thing. Uh, so you know Moss? Moss is a longtime friend, and I can I consider Moss a mentor because before I even was really making beats, um, he was putting me on the records and breaks. He showed a lot of love. That's my dude for life. It's crazy because so this is a story where um, Moss was making beats. <clears throat> Shout out to Dan Green. He got me some beats from this kid. You know, it was a whole disc, and. Uh, I was hearing these beats and shit. I'm like, man, these motherfuckers is dope. You know? Uh, now, for the majority of them, of course, like when someone gives you a bunch of beats, there's a couple of some space shots on that motherfucker. But but it was mostly <laughs> like, you know what I mean? There's some acid joints on there, but it's some joints where I was like, yo, shit is dope. So I never met him, but he was already, you know, a fan of our situation, whatever. <clears throat> and I still never met him to this day. If he walked by. You never met Mars? That's nah, crazy. Never, man. So what happened was, I said to the dude, I was like, yo, um, I could do a whole album with this dude. You know what I mean? Like, that's the type of beats he had. So I started recording, and he was sitting, I talked to him, he started, you know, that's that Street Champ album. You know what I mean? Like, most of them shits is him. You know what I mean? So. I know the whole thing. I remember. Yeah, for me, I think there's a couple, but other than that, it's only, it's, it's really uh, Moss. Um, and I thought, like, from that point, that I might do something again or see him again. But I, I, like I say, he could walk right by me. I don't even know what to do this. You gotta get him on the podcast, man. I mean, That'd be great. Well, now I know, because, you know, <clears throat> and it was crazy, because he signed up with Preem. He got he got with Preem after that. And then, yep. you know, I mean, I don't think it went in the direction that they that he thought it would or whatever. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> I've still never seen him, and I'm sure I will at some point. I did a, I did a beat. A video for him and Rex, and two videos for him and Cool G Rap, but I, I never met him either. Yeah, I, I just. Boss is a super low key, in the cut type of dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, what shit? He has to be. He's so much in the cut. We did a one of my classic albums, Street Champ. <laughs> Shout out to oh, yeah. and, and then that's when I started learning about um, uh, uh, how they was playing a percentage of, of Canadian music. Uh, or produced or whatever artists in Canada, you know what I mean? Yes, you yes, know? yes. So to clarify, if you if you're in Canada by law, the Can the radio in Canada got to play a certain amount of Canadian content to protect Canadian artistry, right. which has which has pros. Uh, it has pros if the music is dope. Sometimes I'm, there's cons to it, but yeah, it's definitely a dope thing. Like they have to play a certain amount. It's yeah, control. I didn't learn that till then because when we were. We were doing the Jasmine Taz and always over there. Um, that's when I found that out from a mad like uh, uh, different artists. And I think back then was Cardinal Official. Oh yeah. Yep. And um, Shout out to Cardi. damn, there's another dude I can't remember, man, right off. Cause he was he was the other dude that Snow? Was, was, nah, nah, this dude was rocking. <laughs> this dude was I think, Tomo Socrates? Socrates. Yeah, Socrates. And it's one more wow. too. But but Jean I mean, Claire. Yeah, yeah, because he did some shit with Google. 
Shock yep, you know. Claire, they did that joint called Bear Witness. Yeah, so. yeah. So I mean, we used to be, you know, it's been a lot of years, man. Some of them. Shout out to y'all. Y'all know what time it is, man. But uh, I got. A, I work with a couple artists up in Canada. Do you mess with Snack the Ripper or Mercules? Are they on your radar? Uh, I've done two tracks with Snack. Yeah, Snack's oh. my dude. Oh, nice. I did a demo. I did a demo with Mercules. It never came out, but Snack. Yeah, I've done a couple tracks. One with Crooked Eye on it. And one another one just for his album. So that's my dude. Shells of the snack. Oh, that's his cool. name is his name is what? Snack Snack the Ripper. The Ripper. Oh my god. <laughs> he's dope, he's dope. So, but Shells the Snack. No, he probably dope. is dope. That name is just one of them names. You know what I mean? Snack the Ripper. Sticks. I've never asked him I've never asked him what it meant or where he got it, but yeah. You know why? You know why? Because you didn't want to know that. You just want <laughs> yo, he was like, yo, I don't want to know this shit. Snack the Ripper. That's why he probably dope as shit. Yeah, he is. But that shit sounds like, man, you you eating in the lower section. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yo. So and it might have something to do with that. Marco knew what time it was. He was like, yo, you know what? I'm not even gonna ask this motherfucking dude. Yo, you my man, son. Let's do another. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, so. But uh, 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 it's real, cause when I see you, you know. I wouldn't see somebody like a person wouldn't just see you and say, oh, damn, he makes beats. He, he does this and that. <laughs> I'm sure, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm, and I'm sure you probably even had that, like, people like wonder what you do or whatever, right? And, yeah, my beats, my beats don't represent how I look like physically, and I'm aware of that, and that's okay. I oh. like to be in the cut, so I think it's cool. I think it's dope because I even re relate that to years ago without certain producers where we, we didn't know much about them. I knew some about them because I was behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Right. Because some dudes look like they make beats and some dudes look like they make cookies. I mean, this shit is, it is, what, it, it is what it is. I have motherfuckers always telling me when we was rolling with Gangstar, I always was security. So bouncers like took a little like it's like I was in a a, 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 a a bouncer fraternity. Every show we went to, them dudes that take pictures with me. Everything I mean for years, and then you go overseas. You're a tall dude, huh? You're a tall dude, right? You're yeah, a tall dude. Yeah, I'm about six three. How tall are you? Not that tall. I'm like five eight, bro. Oh, I'm you sure. five? Yeah, like Guru, five eight and three quarters. I don't never know where he got them three quarters, but he used to say it all the time. <laughs> Rest in peace. How tall are you? About the five nine, yeah. Same. Yeah, so, so y'all five eight and three quarters. Yo, okay. Well, see, y'all are <laughs> y'all are hamster size. What I'm saying is, um, <laughs> yo, silver bag in the hamsters. It's all good though. My son's in the house. Shout out to Tremaine. Now he's six six, three three bills, about three. So. He on some other shit, yeah. He, and we definitely don't call him Snack. But um, yo, uh, nah, I'm fucking with it, man. Hey, yo, you know what it is. Um, so as of late, though, I mean, what what's, what what has Marco Polo been into? Like, what you been? You know what I mean? Well, I definitely gave you the short version of my story. I put out a bunch of records, producer mm -hmm. albums, um, kind of like inspired by Pete Rock, Soul Survivor, minus, you know, I don't rap. So I have mm -hmm. a bunch of albums under my belt, producer projects with some of my favorite MCs. But really in the last few years, me and Master Ace connected on a record called A Brooklyn Story, kind of like, a, you know, on some group shit. And that mm -hmm. went really well. We've been touring the world. And now we're working on a second one. Um, but besides that, I do a lot of sound designing for producers. I put a lot of drum sounds out mm -hmm. and sounds of people to make beats with because I'm known for my drums in my beats. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of taking me on a whole other... You know how you start doing some shit and then life takes you somewhere else and you're like, okay, I'm going to go here. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm Mr. Sound Design Guy now. I'm doing a lot of sound design for like Akai and all the NPC shit that I grew up That's on. I'm working shit. for them now. That's dope. Making, making sounds and it's, it's super dope. Mm. Um, so between that and working with Ace, it keeps me fairly busy and touring and yeah, man. Wow. So are, are you <clears throat> are you in Brooklyn? Do you have family there now or is it still just you? Or? I've been here in Fort Greene for 20 years, bro. Yeah, Fort Greene. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you part of the yeah. woodwork right now. You know what yeah, I mean? man. Well, I'm like I'm like six blocks from Preem and Guru's old apartment over there. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. under uh, Branford Marsalis. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, cause we when I first came to New York, they were living there. So yep. and and right at the corner, uh, St. James or something. Uh, but right at the corner, St. James and Fulton. Yeah. So and and this this is like as the visualization, that's that same shit where they live there. You go right down to the corner as soon as you hit the corner. The right stores, the bodega, with the fucking, you know, the weed, the sandwiches, the beer, the whatever. And oh. to the left 
is the brownstone <clears throat> basically stoop where Biggie and all them was. Like on some real, on yeah, some he real, was St. James and Fulton. Yeah, before he? Biggie even was Biggie, whatever. He just he was there. They was right there on that stoop. That's how I met him. You know, people some know the story where me and Google, Google just got a Grand Cherokee and we rode to the corner, and Google like um, called Biggie over. You know, and he's like, "Yo, what's up?" You know, um, is he then Google? You know, Google's the man at this time. So they're like, "Yo, big," you know, everybody a little, you know, sweating him a bit. And then he said, um. Bust around for my man, telling Biggie, he said, well, I ain't got it right now, but when you come back around, you know, I got you. And I was like, wow, then we watched him go up. So then by then, you know, I knew him obviously, but I just remember when you when you, when you said that, and I just think about that visualization, like, wow, just right down that street, you got Guru and Premier living here, <laughs> you got Biggie hang, hanging out, doing what he was his one to, and over yep. here, he cooling. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. But uh, yep. this is usually when we get on, I know you got a couple of producer questions. Yeah, uh, I, I do. I know you do. What do you do first, drums or melody? So I would say 90% of the time I start with drums. Wow. I start with drums, which is which can be asked backwards. It could kind of corner you into not making a beat, but I kind of like to catch a vibe with drums, have something I can nod my head to while I look for samples. Mm. So I've always been a drum guy pick the tempo and then try and get something to fit to it like i said that could not always work out so dope but that's most of the time that's what i do with the drums okay so mm. in 1997 i got a 200 dollars keyboard called the djx it, it's it's a joke but it was my very first equipment that i could make a beat on what mm -hmm. what was yours Man, mine was the MPC 2000 XL. That was oh, the wow. first machine I used, and I used it up until probably two years ago, where now I switched over to the MPC Live. Even though it's sitting right here looking at me, feeling real jealous. <laughs> um, the 2000 XL is my baby. That's the first and only piece of hardware I use um, to make beats. Oh, shit. Okay. Mm. Yeah, oh. I'm an MPC guy all day. I'm, in, I'm MPC too. Uh, that's, a, that's an infamous town in, in, in called Mattapan, where I'm from. MPC stands <laughs> for Mattapan Connection. Yeah, you know I mean, so we all MPC now, but that, that, that's dope. I mean, he always got these, you know, these producer questions. You know what I'm saying? All I just want, yo, let me hear the beats. Like, <laughs> like you said, you start with the drums and shit. Shit, like, like right now, like one thing in my mind is not even. It's really some steel drum shit. That's what I'm really thinking in my mind. Like the next, like I want to do a joint with some steel drums, is the basis. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? And then boom, like I mean, really, that's that's some some shit for me. But uh, other than that, I got a question. <laughs> it's serious as cancer. Who can make the average dancer hyper like a hot? Oh yeah, that just ran off a little bit. But man, you know what I mean? You know what it is. So we we just like would like to know um, for you to give us uh, ten top MCs. Not period like your ten top MCs from any era, any time. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah. That's what we're looking for right now. Mm. Ten. Oh, okay. It's cause this answer will change every day, just like my favorite. Of producer, course, right? I'm gonna try, try my best. Mm -hmm. Try my best. Um, the first one I got to start with is just because it was the beginning of my hip hop experience in Toronto, which is Maestro Fresh West. Mm. He was like the Big Daddy Kane in Canada. Wow. Um, so shout to Maestro. He was the first, I was doing a running man to his records oh, in, in, shit. In, in middle school, <laughs> Let Your Backbone Slide specifically was his big joint in oh, Canada. Shit. Yeah, and Maestro ended up working with Showbiz too and coming down to New York and doing a bunch of work with wow. the SEC. But yeah, Maestro Fresh West on just, um, just, just on principle. Mm. Um, and then number two, and this is not an order of dopeness. Yeah, it's just, just, just getting ten from you, man. You know, rock him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's rock him. We just quoted him three seconds ago. Rock him. Shouts to rock him. I got a chance to do a joint with him, mm -hmm. and that was to this day one of the highlights of my life. Mm -hmm. Is talking to him on the phone and recording a song with him for one of my projects. Mm -hmm. What an incredible experience. Um, who else? Ghostface. Mm -hmm. Ghostface Killer. I've never worked with Ghost. Hopefully that's going to happen one day. Mm. Um, Style-wise, he was just in another stratosphere to me, just mm. the things he was saying. Um, then I got to say Master Ace, obviously biased, mm. but I think he's one of the most underrated artists of all time. 
mm. and he's still here. And I, I don't think back in the day people would have said Ace out of the Juice Crew would be the one that would still be standing right. strong. Right. You know, right. with G Rap and Kane in the crew, you know what I'm saying? It was it was a tough yeah. it was a tough circle to really yeah. stand out. And Ace is still here killing it. So Master Ace, um, shit. Let me go to some. I gotta shout out Guru too, rest in peace. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you, peace arguably man. Gangstar are one of my favorite, if not my favorite group of all time, or favorite right. duo. Um who else? Let me go to some different ones now. Yeah. Uh yes. Elzai. Elzai from Detroit is right. one of my favorite living MCs right. who's just probably doesn't get the props he deserves, but he's incredible. Mm. <sighs> who else? Yeah, um, what am I at? What am I at? Five, six? You got four more to go. I got four more, more to go. go. Okay, Nas. I got to say Nas. Of course. It's Nas. Of course. You know what it's I mean? Nas. He's just, it's, it, you know, nomadic forever. Yes. yes. Um, shit, who else? Um, yeah, three more to go. I got to shout out Kane. I got to shout out Kane, too. Yeah, Big <laughs> Daddy <laughs> Kane. You know what it is? <laughs> Got two more to go. Let me pick some pick. different ones. Let me pick some go different ahead. ones. That's you. Yeah. It's your picks. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm gonna go MC8 and Scarface Damn. to finish it off. Oh MC8. shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got the <laughs> chair. Hey, I got somebody though who want to. I, I got somebody who want to say something on on that on that list you just picked out. My man. <laughs> yeah. That's that suck. That's that sucker shit. All right, yo. Yeah, and I, but I didn't say I didn't say I know. Either, right? I know. You know hey, me, me and Big know what's up. He just fucking with you. You know I'm fucking with him, shook. I know, son. You know what I mean. So it ain't working. Is, is Biggie, Biggie's in your top ten? I take it. Oh Obviously, yeah, 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 ten. yeah. My top. Like he's in there. He's in there. And um, Rakim, Jay Z, Nas, I'm Black Thought. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's some dudes yeah, in there. I mean, there. there's so many people. Yeah, it's a bunch, man. It's a bunch. No, I don't got no weirdo dudes, though, that in my top shits. But, uh, but I got, you got a good list. I like that Maestro one, even just the way you like, you know what I'm saying, the history of that. Because you said he was like Big Daddy Kane, and he's the Maestro, so that made him Big Daddy Canada. You know what I mean? So he, he's rocking. Yeah. No, no, you taught me something I didn't know. Like, that shit, I, I wasn't aware of all that type of that's how you, you know, my, trust me. You know, I'm sure if you saw him or heard the joints, you 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 probably, I probably remember would. My yeah, man. Because we were yeah, out, just... we were out that way a lot earlier than than most people. I'm talking about gangstar. You know what I mean? Let me. Can I tell you a story involving you, bro? Before mm -hmm. I even made beats and mm -hmm. I was even in music, just in high school, I went to this club in Toronto called The Government, and I watched Gangstar and the roots you mm. guys had a concert together Word. And, that mean, shit was my, and that's when the well, that's when the touring squad for gangstar was deep so you were there fox was there stacks mm. was there yeah Dream, yeah. Guru, like everybody mm. um gordon mm. fat gary yeah like everybody was there. how about produce you got three producers outside yourself that you like like three of them oh that's easy so my top three producers are Okay, Preem is, is number one, undisputed. That'll never change. He's right. number one until I go to the grave. Um, and then it's and then it's really Pete, P Rock, mm -hmm. and Dilla. And okay. Dilla. Those are my three that those are my three that influenced me. You could throw in RZA too, mm -hmm. but yeah, you said that the the Soul Survivor album really influenced you. So, oh man, I think that's the best producer album of all time. I mean, that shows to Marley Marl, who was probably one of the first to do that type of album where it was just a producer and a bunch of uh, MCs on it, but yeah, Soul Survivor to this day, I play it and then wowed by it. His beats on there, it's just, oh. and you know, I, I just love looking back in time at the whole P, not P versus Cream, but there was that golden era time when you know they were dropping records and it was making them go back to the studio like that motherfucker. And then, like, mm -hmm. I feel like they inspired like one of the best times in hip hop, period. Oh. Because of how good they were and how they were inspiring each other, you know what I'm saying? As a as a producer, you think Pete Rock ever had a remix that was better than the original? Many times, which hell one? yeah, yeah. Which one? I'm curious. Um, I mean, shut him down. Uh, okay, I'll give, I'll give you shut him down. Ah, uh, yeah, go ahead. What else you got? Uh, 
I mean, I'll take the the, the Jump Around remix too as a version I like better. I know Jump Around original is, untouch- is untouchable, but Pete's remix run was crazy. Mm, I don't know. Well, I, I, I hear you. I was just curious about that because I never really thought he had a remix that was better than any of the originals. Yo, but and Pete- it's just something I asked producers, yeah. What was your favorite beat on the Soul Survivor album? Because I told Pete Rock that that... That album is one of the what you said. I, t- I told him that's one of the best. You know, so sure. it could change any day. Soul Brother number one is definitely at the top of the list. Take your time. Um, True Master is still. I like Strange Fruit. I'm weird. I like that. I, I, that's not. But see, that's the thing. It's not weird, man. Like I, <laughs> that album is so classic that I'm not like I'm not challenging nobody. Like if that's your joint, that's your joint. That's what spoke to you. But let me I, tell you so, something. Let me tell you something before you finish, man. Any, any dude who tell you that they like strange fruit, <laughs> there's no need to challenge that motherfucker. Yo, <laughs> let him be. <laughs> Yo, that's how that's fuck. I always fuck with him, man. He's incredible. Mr. DL, no. man, you know, the hamster control. Absolutely. <laughs> Yo. What a, I, all right, so every, every producer has a folder of beats that they're not showing anyone except a certain <laughs> rapper that they, they know they're going to meet so and so one day who who's that who's that dream collab you still got your hottest beat sitting in a folder somewhere for you know what man i totally agree with you that that exists but where i'm at now i'm not i don't have that folder no more i let go of it like i'm just i'm in a good position where i'm making multiple streams of money through music in different ways that mm. i just like to work with people that fuck with me you know yeah. what i'm saying because that's when the best music gets made and ace fucks with me so we're in a good groove so honestly Ace gets all my beats, you know what I'm saying? Like, as soon oh, as yeah. I make him, whether I think he'll like him or not, he's mm-hmm. like top of the food chain because he changed my life and I'm a real loyal person. So That's I don't really have that secret stash like, yo, I'm not playing this for Ace because to me, that just is like messed up. Like, Ace gets my best <laughs> shit. That's how I feel. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's some beats that I know he won't mess with, um, just style-wise, he'll be like, yo, that's crazy, it's just not for me. And then, you know, they'll go into a folder that I'll send to somebody else. But honestly, I just, overall, I just stopped sending random beats to strangers that I don't know for money. I will do it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, 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 people, if people reach out to me, like, you know, I do know some people at major labels and they're just like, yo, I'm an A&R, I send some beats and I've had some placements. And they're cool, I like it, but like, the, you know, I got joints where I've never met this person, got a check, and the joint came out cool, and I'm not mad at it, but it's like, yeah, you know, and, and I know I'm in a position of privilege to say that I don't have to do that, because some people just got to do what they got to do, and yeah. I respect that, yeah. but I worked, I've been in this shit for 15 years now, it's just more fulfilling artist-wise to just lock it with people in the lab and just make shit, uh, and that's my favorite shit, so that was a way... Longer answer than you probably. No, that's nah, nah, nah. good, man. Yeah, we like. That's, that's, that's why you're here, man. We like, we like motherfuckers to get on here and get, man. You know, hot winded. But uh, now nah, we like, like, no, for real, yo. Any information, all that is like we taking that in, man, because you know we re- respect you being here. We want to know more about you, just like the people out here that fuck with the Danger Zone podcast episode twenty five. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, hey, I got a question too. Do you, can you still do the running man, son? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. hurt my back, man. I don't, I'm, I've been sober since I was 16. I would need liquor or something to oh, make that happen. Oh, shit. The funny thing is, the funny thing is that I still can. But anyway, um, <laughs> shit. my shit, I'm on some shit. My shit is that strong running, man. That motherfucker strong as shit. <laughs> He'd be like, damn, that motherfucker running. My running man is like the one that runs through walls now. Nah, but, but I mean, did you ever do the running man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> that, yo, yo, show that. Yo, see, yo, Be the out of breath, man. Just act like you all Kelly and you locked down with us. Be the out of yo, breath, do man. Do a running, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's um, so funny. Hey, on some real shit, though, man. Listen, we appreciate. Oh, matter of fact, hold on one second. You got a couple questions for him? No, we, 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 co- we covered we cover that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool, man. Listen, man, we appreciate you, man. Can you just tell us your social medias and. <laughs> About people to you know reach out and see what's good with um Marco yeah, but Polo. Before, uh, but before that, I gotta give it up, Shook. Thank you for literally being the creator of one of the greatest, you know, with Gangstar. Like, I really feel like that is the essence of the whole reason I got into this music shit was listening to y'all. Like, right, right. I need to say it to your face now while I can. Thank right. you for, nah, you know what I'm man, saying? Cause it's because of you and the, the origins and all this shit happened, right. the connection happened and like, 
thank you, brother. Like that shit is monumental yeah. for the culture and I grew up listening to you guys like straight before I even touched a beat machine. Like right, I grew right. up listening to you guys just like, in awe of the shit. That's what got me into hip hop. Nah, so thank you. Nah, hey, listen, I pre appreciate all of that because even like sometimes I speak to people about you know, even the, the the logo, you know, I, I created that because Guru was the artist and I was just speaking it. Yo, we need to get this star like this. We need, And he would show it to me. So when I see that on, in signs and the cover, I'm like, damn, that's some shit we was just sitting on the wall talking about. And, and so and one more thing I got to say too that I think is crazy about the whole Primo Guru yourself is that, yo, Gangstar created like a New York sound from with motherfuckers that were not and from, from New, New York. You're right about that, man. You know, you're right about that, man. And that's how I feel too, because I was the outsider coming from Toronto. Right. So to come in and dip my toe in the pool and try and like yeah. make that sound, it's like, you know, he made it like, okay, you can not be from New York and contribute and make dope shit. And, and, and that's when I looked at y'all, I was like, these dudes literally came into New York and yeah. just destroyed. Yeah, that shit, was, like, that shit was a movement, man. And listen, uh, I'm the father of three. And they just hit me, they just hit me up on social media telling me that it's okay if you call me dad, but uh, on some other shit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would fuck with you. But uh, <laughs> hey, man, this shit, I, I appreciate uh, all man. that. I appreciate your time. Yeah. We're glad that yeah, you man. came through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, uh, thanks for having me, man. My, yeah. my socials, my socials on yeah. Instagram, Marco Polo Beats, Marco mm -hmm. Polo Beats, Twitter, Marco Polo Beats. Everything is really Marco Polo Beats. Okay. So, get at me. Y'all get at him, man. Check him out, Marco Polo, uh, the Danger Zone Podcast. We great for having, grateful for having him. Hell yeah. Having you, bro. You know what I'm saying? In line. Yeah, man. You know, I hope they run into you again soon, myself. You know what I mean? And. You know, even chop it up more musically or what yeah, happened. Next time, you know next time you come through New York or you're at, you know, the studio with Preem, just hit me. I'll roll through. For sure. And that's, that'll be very soon. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's my, what's up. My man, have a good one, man. Peace, man. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Later, guys. It, it's that time of the week, man. You know, my favorite time of the week. We, we do interview legendary guests, and I like trash television, and I love Stupid as Hell. Stupid as hell, son. <laughs> you know, this week, man, listen. Ah, oh, man. Now, this is what it is. A burglar found the perfect house for a robbery. Hmm. A criminal's main aim is to find the perfect spot in which he can execute his robbery, planning the same as the dumbest criminal did. Instead of finding the right house to rob, this man invaded a house full of cops. And that's how he handed over himself to the police without any trouble. Now, <laughs> the man, who we won't name right now, but he was from Abington, Northampton, entered the house at the night that was already burgled, uh, burgled earlier that night. So there were police officers for investigation purposes. And at the same time, this man broke in. Of course, he tried to run immediately, but was not that easy. And he was caught at the spot. The burglary was unsuccessful. I guess so, you stupid son of a bitch. And from that time, he comes as one of the world's most dumbest criminals. Before entering the police house, he tried to invade another house, but unsuccessfully left marks of his blood on the window. So the cops easily linked him to that case, too. <laughs> and now you can imagine the face of the dumbest criminal at the time of catching up by the cops. This stupid as hell this week is a man named Darren Kempton. Darren Kempton, you, my friend, are stupid as hell. Ba -ba -ba. Hey, come on. If you're going to break in some house, blood. at least look through the window or something, man. I'm not advocating. And he would have seen it was cops in there. <laughs> at least but, blood. but your ass was probably getting trying to get drinks or drugs or chips or something. So, Kempton, you stupid as hell. Yeah, we gonna keep on popping, man. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, as I always say, man, excuses have no purpose, so don't make them. And as we grow, we glow. So we try to do this together, man. Peace. On my dark days, I chopped crack on a regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on a regular. Took big fat ass stacks from the register. No matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure the hard I have. Still caught a cab.